Good, brother, go around. Get some good, some food in you. Step three. You grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four. F everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. 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 Yo, set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do. The aftermath of preparation. Good food, good mood, blood in circulation. One step at a time. Yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control and the steps you take them. I try to pick. One thought, have some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Wake up, today's gonna be a good day 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 Wake up Today's gonna be a good day so Life ain't easy, yo I think there's a reason, though Ups and downs Just like every different season, yo Sometimes I'm high Other times I'm barely breathing, though I you always gotta fight and hide From the demons, yo Negative thoughts are poison they ride uh. Head full of flaws So here come the clouds uh. They'll never stop Unless I can swap All the bad for the good In my head when I'm lost uh. Yeah, so I'ma fake it till I make it Positive thoughts are overtaking I got patience One day at a time is how you operate a cadence A flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation Stay away from all the shit that causes temptation I know that I like to do it cause it's sensation I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Tom, it's just a tough subject. A recent study by Brown University showed that nearly 450 children are killed each year by their parents. My daughters were picked up on a Friday by their father to spend the weekend. And that night, he um, pumped carbon monoxide into their bedroom and slit their throats. This has begun for two children killed by their mother in Pickens County. Nine-year-old Hayden King was laid to rest today. Hayden's four-year-old sister Harper will have a celebration of life service tomorrow morning. Here's a story that's breaking at six o'clock. It's all centered around the three people you see on your screen. The key pieces in a Middletown murder case. On the left is James Hutchinson. Police say the six-year-old was killed allegedly by his own mother. East Los Angeles mother was charged today with killing her three young children. The youngest was less than two months old. At six with breaking news. Good evening to your friends, Greg Merriweather, along with Elizabeth Bow. Our top story today: that precious little two-year-old right now. Two people are facing charges, accused of murdering little Nebea Allen. Investigators found the two-year-old dead in Mississippi after several days of searching. One of those blamed in her death, the girl's mother, Lanaya Cardwell.
Austin Rogers is a 15-year-old autistic boy that went missing from Sumner County, Tennessee, Hendersonville, Tennessee, on February 26th, the same day that Madeline Soto disappeared from Kissimmee, Florida. This is a case where this 15-year-old autistic boy allegedly got up in the middle of the night and walked out his door and never was seen again. Many people that have uh, autistic children understand that this is a weird um, analysis of what could happen, especially when you have an autistic child that is not a runner, always has his feet covered. Let's leave it like that. He always puts something on his feet to go outside and he just vanishes. There were uh, videos that went out that said that something was flashlights in their backyard. People are looking at the stepfather, Chris, Christopher Proudfoot, because he's had DCS in his life in the past. He's going through a custody battle in New Mexico, uh, which has allegations of spousal and domestic violence abuses inside the home. The Sumner County residents are calling on extra resources uh, to help search and aid in Sebastian's um, return. Nobody knows where Sebastian is. We've got people out. Um, many people believe Chris Proudfoot has something to do with it. So they're running along his path of travel to find out anything, any possible dumping sites for Sebastian. We know we just had the Cajun Navy over there at Riley Strain's case and a TikToker with 92,000 followers is begging for the Cajun Navy to get involved in this case as well. So is it possible? Could Christopher Proudfoot be associated with this? Did he come home that weekend? He's saying that he stayed in Memphis the entire weekend and never came back home uh, to his wife or his stepson. Uh, what is your thoughts on this case? I am going out there sometime next week to start aiding in the efforts uh, for the search, as well as bringing my platform to bring awareness to his case. I hope you guys support those efforts and I will see you guys real soon. From the East Coast to the West Coast, we are everywhere true crime is. We are asking for the public's help. We are searching in the woods. We are doing what it takes here on the Bullhorn Betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news. I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work we will continue to fight for these victims and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the coffee club. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. And more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you. God bless America. And more importantly, God bless our victims. Well, good morning, my beautiful people of YouTube and X. It's nice to see you. I am back in the office. It's TGIF. It feels great today. We've got a lot to cover. Uh, related to the Sebastian Rogers case today. There's obviously a TBI meeting. There was uh, a couple interviews Seth provided. There was a Fox News interview that uh, Katie and Chris has uh, uh, again provided prior to the TBI um, meeting. So there are some things going on, but what do you think? Like, you know, when I heard this yesterday, I was, you know, I do my research all day long, so I'm constantly ch uh, checking for new um, articles, new information, things like that. And then all of a sudden, I see this 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 thing come up saying the TBI met with the bio parents, uh, implying Chris Proudfoot wasn't there. Then we start hearing some news come out, and it sounded like he was there. Well, last night or this morning or whenever it happened, I have no earthly idea. 
Dolly Vision had an interview with Seth Rogers, and Seth uh, basically implied that him and Katie were there. Chris was not present for that interview. <clears throat> so what is going on here? And, you know, when I was listening to it, there was another interview. Let me find out where it is. Hold on a second. There was another interview provided uh, from Fox Nashville. But I saw it in a um, title, or um, and it said basically that, um, and maybe it might have been a Twitter post with this in it, and it basically said, uh, Father reveals that TBI believes Sebastian is alive. What? He's alive? So I tune in, and I'm watching this video, and I'm looking at this man talk. And I'm like, that's not what he said. That's not what he said at all. You know, we're good about reading between the lines and reading expressions on people's face. And more importantly, can see when somebody's holding a whole bunch of stuff back. God bless Seth Rogers. I just want to say that right now. God bless Seth Rogers. Seth Rogers, um, my heart bleeds for this man. My heart bleeds for this man. Um, you know, I have been having issues getting out there, period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. There, Everybody knows that I wanted to go to Riley Strain. Everybody knows I want to be here. It looks like it's going to be another three to five days before I can go out. Everybody knows I've got a court here. So I'm trying to balance going out to, to Tennessee to help this case uh, while preparing for a major court hearing, which, you know what, I'm up for the task, right? If, if I mean, that's the, the whole purpose of being part of the Bullhorn Betty team is the fact that we never give up and we do things that are very difficult at times. And so, um, you know, I have had to pray over this, you know, what is the best situation for me in, in you know, whether to get out here or not. And so I've been praying over it. I've been praying over it. And I think it just really decides on when my car gets back to me. If I get back Monday, it looks like I'm going to be able to go out there and start aiding in searches. I don't know where the, the United Cajun Navy is searching, but they're still right in the same place setting up. And the places I've identified are not there. So I don't know what they're doing. I really don't. Um, I don't know what areas they've identified. Um, I, I can't, you know, because of everything going on, I'm not going to dog uh, because it's, it's affecting Seth. Uh, but I can't work with the United Cajun Navy. I'm not going to. I will not have any photos with them. I will not support their organization in the least bit. Um, but I support Seth. I support Seth. And because I support Seth, that's why I came on here and, and told people, no matter how we feel about the United Cajun Navy, we need to get bodies out there. Um, we did find, and a lot. I know a lot of my other people here on social media pretty much had the same thing. We're, we're not supporting the United Cajun Navy but at the same sense, we need to have bodies out there searching. Um, so it sounds like they're getting some more organization together with the United Cajun Navy. I think that they really did not know what they were doing. I think the um, uh, the pressure from social media for them to do better has got them a little bit more organized. Um, but again, a far stretch from th what we thought we were getting, right? A far stretch from what we thought we were getting. Um, this team needed to be trained, period. They, they are, they are uh, not really qualified for this level of organization, in my opinion. It's just, it is what it is. Um, they are a nonprofit, but they are not the, the original Cajun Navy. The story that they gave on, um, on Nancy Grace was a false story. It was somebody else's story. And so for those reasons, and those reasons alone, I'm not going to support that organization at all. Um, with that being said, Seth still needs help. And it's not about this organization. It's about Sebastian. It's about supporting a family that needs the support of social media. That's what it's about. It's about coming together for the greater good. And I think that that is what social media can do best, right? I mean, we are all here fighting. We all have in fighting. We all have out fighting. We all have public fighting. We all have behind the scenes fighting. We all have embarrassing moments. We're all imperfect, right? But the one thing I think social media does is when 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 push comes to shove, you know, we put that in, in many cases for the people out there doing this work, we put that on the back burner for the greater good. 
And so this is one of those things where it's the greater good, but because I'm, I'm, I'm asking people to go help this organization, I'm going out constantly put that disclaimer on it. And it's because again, I have my own reputation, right? And um, one of my reputations is not dealing with people that take advantage of situations. And that's what I feel had happened here. I feel that the only reason why we're getting the work that we're getting out of them right now is because of the public pressure, because they were exposed. Um, that's truly why. And so I, I digress with the situation. Those are hypotheticals. Those are my opinions. That doesn't mean it's fact. I don't know where these people come from. I don't know what's in their heart. I don't know what their purpose is. I just pray to God that they're there to help and to help Seth. Um, one of the reasons why I'm not identifying the areas in and around that location is because we know that law enforcement has penetrated that area with drones, helicopters, dogs, a horseback, everything. So in that five mile radius, I mean, yeah, you can look here and there for little spots that you think that might be promising. But for the most part, in my mind, it's been saturated. It's been thoroughly searched. It's been overly searched. And so it's telling me that that's not the best or the greatest area to search. And I'm not about doing busy work. I'm about doing real work. And I feel like researching the same areas that have already been searched is, is busy work, not actual work. Um, but either way, we're not here for that. Uh, I would like people that are in the area to get out there and help search. Today's Friday. It's Good Friday. If you're off work, maybe give back. You know, it, it is the Easter holiday, right? Um, maybe find something deep inside of you and and go out there and, and, and donate an hour or two, you know, for the Easter weekend in honor of Easter. Um, we can always do something. We can always do our part. All right. So there's my kind of introduction. Okay. That's just kind of where we're at with this. Now, TBI, what in the world is going on? So many of you know, Sebastian Rogers disappeared February 26th. He hasn't been seen again. We're getting a whole lot of mixed information. The Proudfoots look very suspicious, although there's no evidence whatsoever saying they did anything wrong. Okay. I want to make sure that that's very clear here. Um, what we're feeling is our intuition and our gut instincts, okay? Our intuition and our gut instincts do not equate to fact, unfortunately, okay? And we can sit there and point our fingers and accuse somebody until the cows come home. It doesn't make it so, right? We could be wildly wrong. This boy could have just had a bad day and just had enough and walked out the door. He could have. We have nothing to the contrary. That to that happening. However, we kind of do because here are some key mistakes. This is what I'm kind of, there's a couple things that I feel like kind of happened at the beginning of this case that really caused problems for Katie and Chris's story moving forward. And one of those keys is, is when she called law enforcement and law enforcement was there on the ground, I think almost immediately when they went to that retention pond and they saw those foot, foot those footprints not shoe prints, footprints. I think that's when, um, and Katie may have heard it and may have said, he doesn't have any shoes. It had to have been him. That has to be his footprints. He didn't, he didn't leave his shoes. And I don't think she realized at that point how critical that information was going to be. We know that whatever prints or shoe prints out there are one of two things. They weren't made by Sebastian because law enforcement has, you know, Proudfoot said there was a hit. Law enforcement said there was no hit. The only um, hit that we have even identified from law enforcement is one that they said was a false hit. So one of two things happened. Either somebody staged that area with those footprints or those footprints were old. Those are the only two explanations in my mind that could have happened with those footprints. Because law enforcement is adamant, adamant that there was no hit at that water retention pond and they drained that retention pond, my understanding, to search for Sebastian because they thought he may have been in there. So that was all false. So now we have to decide, was it staged? Was it a staged scene? Could have been. We don't know. Um... 
so that was one of the weird things about about that whole retention pond and we're hearing that there truly was footprints out there so i'm trying to figure out how those footprints got introduced and why it was a false hit and the only thing i can think of is that somebody either you know those were just old you know somebody was down there at some point in time and you know with what ground you can literally step on what ground and go back a month later and see your footprint there you know because it's dried into the the mud so we don't know what kind of footprint it was or how long that footprint had been there. But if it had recently just had been put there, it makes me feel like it was staged, which again, I don't think this 15 year old boy is going to be going through this elaborate hoax of staging a scene. So what did TBI want to talk to them about? Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's hear what Seth has to say about this, because there's some things I have to say, because when I first saw, saw this interview, um, the let me see if it's here. I think they may have changed the, the title because I'm telling you, it, there was a title I read and it says TBI believes Sebastian Rogers is alive. And I tuned in. I'm like, what? <laughs> what where did this come from? Because if he's alive. You know, I want to get that out there. If, if they think something else, I want to get that out there. But the bottom line is, is I'm like, you know, everything is not leaning that we got to keep hope. I mean, we we have a Charlotte Senna situation, right? We all believe Charlotte Senna was a goner. And by the grace of God, that child was able to be reunited with her family. Now she was, she had a lot of injuries, but she was able to survive those injuries and be reunited with her family and have a chance to recover and live her life to the fullest. So just because statistics tell us one thing, it doesn't always make it so. We have those small little chances. The father is not giving up hope. And that's always a good sign. But I'm looking at his face and he looks really sad, y'all. He surely does. He looks... Um, he doesn't look like he got the information he's saying that he got, unfortunately, in my mind. Let's look at him. Pay close attention to, to his body language. You know, that's what we look at. Is he telling the truth? Is he not telling the truth? Is he holding back some things for the integrity of the investigation? I truly believe that this is a criminal investigation and law enforcement is giving these this family member bare minimum. Even Seth goes, look, I'm, I'm even a suspect in this, right? Because until the case is closed and what happened to him, everybody's a suspect. He's saying, he's putting his hand up, I'm a suspect. Why is everybody else trying to say they're not? He, even Seth is saying, I am. Raising a hand, yeah, I'm, I'm a suspect too. So why is everybody else having a problem saying that? We don't know what happened to my son. Everybody's a suspect. He owned it. That doesn't sound like a man that's that's trying to hide something. It's me, Jen. It's nice to see you this beautiful morning. Angela, second thesis. Mike Stevens up in the house. Mama Lama, our beautiful Mama Shell Bell. I haven't seen you in here for a little minute. Maybe I missed you. Maybe I missed you. Our beautiful original Beaner Steffers. Good morning, my coffee beans. Susiana, November rain. It's nice to see you. Oh, our beautiful Steffers already starting this morning. Oh, that's so sweet, Tammy. It's nice to see you. Good morning. Our beautiful Sonia's in the house. And Audrey, good morning. It's nice to see you <clears throat> as well. I haven't been eating or drinking milk here in a little minute because it always makes me cough. And I'm still coughing. It drives me nuts. I love milk, though. It's hard. We got our hugs dealer in the house. I need a hug. We ain't got drugs. We got the hugs dealer. If you need a hug please hit up the dealer of love. It is nice to see you all. Tammy's up in the house. Good morning. Good morning. Anybody else that uh, pickle bar, it's nice to see you. Good morning. Anybody else that I have glossed over? I kind of took a little too long on my intro, so I do apologize about that. And we're just now going to get into this interview, but I wanted, I just want you guys to pay attention to it because I'm telling you, when I listened to this interview, I literally stopped it and went back to the title and it said something different than it says this morning. <laughs> that's all I know. And I'm like, that's not what this man said. That's definitely not what this man said. Um, <clears throat> he's saying if, 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 
And I'm like, this isn't, it just doesn't sound good to me, guys. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. It doesn't sound like whatever meeting they had with TBI was very promising. That's all I'm saying. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. I wasn't even the fly on the wall, right? So I don't know. I just know that what he's saying happened, his body language is holding a lot back. That's all I know. I don't know much, but I trust that. So let's get let's get started. Here we go. This is Seth Rogers. This is the biological father of Sebastian Rogers. He has been out there day and night looking for his son. And he hasn't stopped, you know, uh, people are looking at him as if he was there. Look, guys, he was literally at work at a, at a, at a um, from my understanding, a correctional facility. He didn't even get off work until seven o'clock in the morning. So as far as this man being a possibility, you're wrong. Like he, the, the man, the man had had cameras on him all night long. That is my understanding because he even says, you know, I was just getting off work. I had to wait, and, and and as soon as I got off work, I went straight over there to the house. He was walking out of work in the morning. That means he had the night crew. He was there overnight. So if he was there overnight, you explain to me how the heck he had any time to go over there and and, and you know get his son. This man is probably the most innocent out of everybody involved. Because he he's not only clocked into work, he not only has cameras, he's not only in a jail already. So we we have to, you know, look at that. But let's listen to what Seth said happened at the TBI. You'll hear him. I, I there's something, you know, he says some things under his breath, like, you know, you're right. You you would think that. You know, you can hear him say some stuff. And I don't think I think this man is is a side eye and Chris Proudfoot. I'm sorry. I think this father side eyed and Chris Proudfoot like what? That's what I truly believe. He side eye and Chris Proudfoot. I'm sorry. I, I believe this is a smart man. He works with criminals. I think he I think he can look at that man and tell when that man's given him a bunch of crap blown up his butt. I truly believe it. You know why? Because he works with a bunch of people that are professional, you know, smoke up the butt blowers. It's called our criminal population. Since your son went missing, how are you feeling today? Same as I was yesterday. Um, just continuing the search, continue looking. I'm not going to give up. Nobody can make me give up. See, nobody can make me give up. Why are we hearing this from this boy's mother? The woman that literally spit him out. We're getting none of this from his mother. This is only coming from his father. That man is standing there by himself. Yet there's three parents in this household with this kid. But why is he always standing there by himself? That's what I would like to know. And where have you been searching? Where do you think he is? I've been searching everywhere. I mean, anything out of that, that five mile radius that the initial search did, they covered See, five mile radius. That's why I said, you know, we got to look outside of that five mile radius because that five mile radius was thoroughly searched by multiple people and they were ser thoroughly searched over and over again. So they went with people, then they went with the horses, then they went with, you know, the dogs, you know, so they did multiple searches over that five mile radius. Um, it's, in my opinion, based upon the reports I read, it seems like it was well searched, you know? everything there but there's stuff elsewhere i mean we got a lot of territory to cover and it being over a month he could be anywhere currently so i'm searching everywhere you katie and chris had a meeting with tbi today did you find see she keeps saying you katie you chris and katie chris wasn't there if we're, we're going to go over to dolly's interview in a second and you'll hear him allude while well, i know me and katie were there so it implies that Chris Proudfoot did not attend this meeting. I don't know if he was um, requested. You know, I have no idea. Find out any new information. Okay, here's the new information he's saying. Now, He first thing you notice is he scratches his hand. I get it. Um, but I want you guys now to watch him. Uh, he's got glasses on, so you can't see his eyes, but you can definitely see the forehead. So just pay attention to how he is. Oh, good morning, Phoenix Rising. It's nice to see you, my love. 
just pay attention to the way he's acting because I, I feel like he's holding a lot back in this interview. This is the first time I felt like he was holding, like you are going to go look at uh, Dolly's interview and you're going to see how much more relaxed he is than he is here. It seems like when she's hitting on some questions, especially when it comes to Katie or Chris, you almost see him clam up. Like he doesn't want to say anything. I get it. I get it. And, 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 and what a great dad to do that because it, it obviously shows he has a lot to say about the matter. He's just letting this process work as it's going to work. Right. So let's listen to what he has to say. Not that I can discuss. Any progression that might show hope in this search? Oh, I always have hope. He has hope, but that wasn't the question. That wasn't the question. Can't take that away from me. And how confident are you that Sebastian is alive? And what do you think he's doing right now? Uh, pretty sure. This is kind of an odd response, in my opinion, because it seems like... <sighs> I'll let you guys watch it and then we'll discuss it. He's probably playing video games somewhere. Nobody's letting him, you know, whoever's got him. They're not letting him see the regular news. They're not letting him surf the internet. Or else he'd know that I'm looking for him. You notice that? He makes sure that he lets everybody know. But he does it so very delicately and very uh, professionally. He's like, look, you know, he's talking about somebody else. But he's saying, well. Whoever does have him is not giving him access to anything. He Otherwise, he would be reaching out to family. He would know I'm looking for him. It's just, you know, listen to how he says this. This is almost, in my opinion, cryptic in a way of how he's expressing this. So I'm going to go back and I'm not going to interrupt this. I'm going to move it back just about five or ten seconds. And then we're going to listen. I'm letting him surf the Internet. Or else he'd know that I'm looking for him. And he'd know that he should actually be trying to get a hold of me. And that keeps me going. Is there a strong reason to believe he may have been a, a, abducted? I don't know if he's been abducted or if he's just, you know, over at a friend's house. Look at it. Look at how he's holding his hands now. Like I, <clears throat> it's like now from this point forward, you're going to start seeing him to get a little more active with his body. Um, moving his arms and stuff like that, because, and the reason why I think it is, is because he, to me, is telling the world what they need to hear, um, what they want to hear. I feel like he's struggling himself, trying to maintain composure as he's spinning this, what, in my opinion, I believe he thinks, he, not me, but he thinks is bullshit. Just my opinion. Never know. Never know. But I'll know when I find him. I'm not. He'll know when he finds him what happened to him. So let's go back. I'm just going to go back to the 16th mark, and we're going to just play that without me interrupting. They're not letting him surf the internet. Or else he'd know that I'm looking for him. And he'd know that he should actually be trying to get a hold of me. And that keeps me going. Is there a strong reason to believe he may have been a, a, abducted? I don't know if he's been abducted or if he's just, you know, over at a friend's house. He knows Never he's know. not at a friend's house. But I'll know when I find him. I'll know exactly what has happened to him. See? In other news outlets. That was almost, to me, uh, a cue. As soon as I find him, I'll know exactly, exactly what happened to him. I'll know exactly what happened to him. That is almost like a cannon shot to me. He's calm. He's cool. He's composed. But in my opinion, he's saying, I'm going to continue to look for my son. And when I find him, I'm going to know exactly what happened to my son. So this definitely not the, uh, the promising news that was in that title line that I had a re read last night. Again, much different than the title line here. I'm telling you what it said because I remember going, what? And I remember stopping the video and going back to the title because I was halfway through the video and I'm like, that's not what he's saying here. So they must have changed the title when they realized it. that's not what he said at all.
vets were reporting that there were lights seen in the backyard that were caught on camera by a neighbor's video. Is that true? No. What that was was a trash truck. They're saying a trash truck typically goes through this neighborhood around 5 a.m., but this particular trash truck came through the neighborhood at 311 this particular night. But the weird thing is, unless people, because I'm not out there, y'all. You guys know I'm sitting here in Florida. So I haven't seen their property in real life. I'm only seeing it on a map. And in my vision, I can't, you know, I can visualize the house, but I can't visualize where those flashlights were. And so I rely on other people's work. So I go to other channels that say that show you where these lights um, are are popping up, and it looks like it's in the backyard. It doesn't look like it's a road back there, is what I'm saying. So if it's not a road back there, and it's like this patch of grass that's just a common area between um, the property lines, why would a dump truck be right driving on that? Now again, that's based upon if those people's perception of where those lights were and where they're showing people they're at is accurate. But I could have sworn it's it, it wasn't on a road. It was in like a grassy, knolly cut through area. Um, it was five, they said. It wasn't three. Oh, so they're saying that the timestamp on the video was off. Got it. Got it. Well, it was awfully dark. I mean, that was like pitch black. Five o'clock, I would think that there would have been a little sun coming up. Seth said yesterday it was like it wasn't 3.11 a.m. was later. Well, then he was probably saying it on here. I probably just missed it. So we'll get back to this this video and keep going. But, you know, it was just, but it's still weird. Was it in that grassy knoll area or, or, or did people have their location wrong? Because I don't see a dump truck even at 5 a.m. driving through grass. And that's what it looked like. Well, at least the ones that I saw show it being on the back, of, like in the grassy. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'll have to go look at those videos. But I never paid attention to it anyways, because to be honest with you, like I told you, unless somebody circled those things on this dark video, I would never even have thought that they were flashlights, in my opinion. It was stuck at three. Oh, got it. Got it. Okay. Got it. Went through. Picked up trash, and when it left, of course, it went faster. It didn't have to stop to pick up trash. That's just false information provided by a particular person. Did the dog ever pick up a scent for Sebastian? He was uh, he was throwing some shade over there at Nick Bears. Nick Bears, you're on the chopping block with Seth Rogers. Wow. Oh, for my information that I've been given, no. Did they find anything? Oh, let me hear that again. Faster. It didn't have to stop to pick up trash. That's just false information provided by a particular person. I want to hear a question. Did the dogs ever pick up a scent for Sebastian? For my information that I've been given, no. There, right there, that face, that answer. Let me, let me break this down for you guys. Can anybody please, maybe, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm a Jackie of all trades, master of none, right? So, uh, you know, I may, I, may I may know enough to get me out of trouble, but I'm not an expert in these fields, right? So I might just be a li little ignorant, okay? I might just be a little ignorant. I, I, you know, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But I always thought that no matter what part of your body touches something, it leaves scent, oils, DNA. I, I don't know. I mean, I was just, you know, now granted, we're just in the true crime and we know very little about forensic evidence or anything like that. So, you know, we might be wildly off base here. So my assumption would be, call me crazy, <laughs> people do, that a kid walking out of a house barefoot is leaving a scent. Why? Because he's barefoot. Skin cells are falling off every step you take. You're leaving your DNA because you're, 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 you're putting skin, raw skin, on a surface. So can anybody explain to me if a kid walks out of the house without any shoes on, 
why we have no scent walking out of that house. He had no shoes on. That means bare skin against hard surface, which is a smorgasbord of scents for dogs. It's brain. Somebody said that it was brain. It dropped cold. Yeah, and I could understand that, you know, because we talked about scent and we know that our environmental environmental changes do affect the scent of the dog. We learned that in Summer Wells. We learned that in Summer Wells. I'll find the video. We'll go over it again about the scent dogs and the, pro, you know, the, the stuff related to the training and all that other stuff. You're right, but no scent? I mean, we, we, we've seen dogs take scents and go in, in wildly wrong directions, but they're saying there's no scent at all. Not that the scent was drifted, not that the scent, um, just no scent at all. Does he sleep with socks on? Great question, Lori. I don't know. I don't know. Like I would have expected it, it, with the rain and the weather and everything, it to move the scent. Okay. Like I would think it, you know, that's what we learned when we were studying uh summer wells that the scent drifts with the wind, with the rain. But I I I don't know if it's see, I'm not an expert. So it's plausible, right? Maybe the rain extinguished the scent altogether. But I find that odd because if I recall correctly, now maybe I'm wrong about this too. I could have sworn it, it, it rained near and, and around when summer disappeared too, but I can't remember. I may just be making that up. Maybe wishful thinking. But they were able to find sense for her days later. Days later. Um, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's see what else Seth has to say. But that's the one thing. Let's go back and listen to that because, again, he went out without shoes and he's even himself saying not one scent dog. And this comes back to what those those searchers were saying. They're like, look, we always get a hit. We get something at this point. We get something. We get we got nothing. That's what the searchers said right around there. They were very concerned. They're like, we've never had a situation like this come up. That's what they said. I think I got I think I got one of their interviews. We'll look, we'll listen to it and see what they actually say. Did they find anything on Sebastian's cell phone that would, you know, kind of show that he was going to run away or where he might be? Not that I know of. He didn't have any internet access or anything on there. He had... So they're still removing the internet as a predatory thing. So he like there's no predatory, there's no stranger like they 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 have sheltered this boy so much that he he's there's no stranger danger here. He was never alone. He was always with a parent because he he didn't really have friends. He didn't go anywhere by himself. He was always taken care of by somebody else. So this idea that just one day he wakes up and 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 all of a sudden his his disability of being autistic which makes him have to have a schedule and makes him want everything in a specific order just to that particular day decides that it, he doesn't want to be autistic that day, right? His, his, his disability just goes away where he's walking out the door without his shoes on. He's running away when he's never ran away before. You know, it just, it, these things don't make sense. And I think that's what the world is really gravitating to when it comes to this case is that it doesn't make sense. We're all sitting here reeling listening to all the information. We know truth is stranger than fiction, but this is just wild for many of us. Just a wild story. Like how in the world can this happen? It's almost like the Riley strain. You know, he disappeared in a six minute window in a half a block radius, yet he was found eight miles down the river without any britches on. But no foul plays expected or, or assumed in that case. And he has no water in his lungs. So strange phenomenons do happen. Let's keep going. We've been able to call, text, take a picture, send a picture, use the calculator. That's about it. Uh, was Sebastian in school on Friday the day before he went missing? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, are you, Chris or Katie, or any of you suspects in this case? No, we're not. 
So he says in this instance, this is where I think he's just saying what law enforcement wants him to say uh, for the sake of his son. But he says right here, none of them are suspects at this time, but keep waiting because down the road, he says we're all suspects, which again, I feel like he's saying what he needs to say to keep everything down so everybody can get along for the efforts to, to find his son, which is smart. And you can't blame the father for wanting to do that. Let's keep listening. Uh, have you been cleared? I don't know. The investigation is still ongoing. We wouldn't be cleared until the investigation is done. There you go. So you can't you can't be not not persons of interest or suspects without being cleared. So you you see where I'm going with this? He's saying no, I'm not cleared. Nobody's cleared. That we're none of us are going to be cleared until this case is closed. But none of us are suspect. It doesn't it doesn't bode. You know it doesn't bode. So this is why. Like I, again, he was at a working throughout the night the night that that Sebastian disappeared. So of all people that have a pretty strong alibi, it would be this man right here because he would be on camera. He would have a clock in. You know, they, in my opinion, out of all the people that are involved in this case, he would be the most cleared person here. But he's saying even he himself, with all of this information, he himself isn't cleared in law enforcement's eyes, right? So if, if he's on camera, he's clocked in and he's still not cleared. What do you think about Christopher Proudfoot with no alibi? But yeah, he won't even have, like, we know where Seth was. We know where mom was. We know every detail of both mom and Seth's schedule. But for whatever reason, when it comes to Chris Proudfoot, it's a state secret. Like he's got like, you know, super uh, powers where his his story is the only story that's going to make or break this case. You notice that? Because his story is the only one that needs to be secret because of the integrity of the investigation. His His, his whereabouts are the only ones that law enforcement don't want the public to know about because it could affect the case. What? If, if, if the public can know where Seth was and the public can know where the bio, if the bio, the public has a lot to know where bio dad is and bio mom is, what makes the stepdad dad's location, this, this top secret, you know, operation? I, I'm, I'm scratching my head here thinking, why are they, why is Chris so top secret? What's going on? Is it somebody after Chris? Can somebody answer that for me? Why can we know everybody else's schedule, but whatever reason, when it comes to Chris Proudfoot, it's a fucking state secret. Excuse my language, but I need a fact here. Does it make sense? Why is Chris so secretive? Why is he the only one so secretive? And why does he have scratches up and down his arm? Both of them. Does it make sense? If Chris has, was far, far away like Seth was, and Seth has no problem telling people where he was during the time his son disappeared. Why can't Chris do that? Questions. We've got questions. I wonder if we're ever going to get the answers to them. But currently, from my understanding, they don't have any information that would attach us to any wrongdoing. That's the real issue right there. Let's listen to what Seth just said. They're not cleared, okay? They're not, not persons of interest. This is the reality of it. Listen to his words when it comes to them. Listen. We wouldn't be cleared until the investigation is done. But currently, from my understanding, they don't have any information that would attach us 
They don't have any information that would attach us. You know what he's saying? They don't have any evidence yet. It doesn't mean things didn't happen. And I truly believe this man thinks that something happened. And you're going to hear that because as they go through this interview, he kind of eludes to that. Let's listen. Anywhere I'm going. Um, CPS has gone to Katie's house before. You didn't know about that until this investigation. How does that make you feel? That somebody somewhere dropped the ball because I was never informed. And Can you imagine finding out that your child is missing? The stepfather has scratches on him. The stepfather is the only one that has this top secret... Um, um timeline that law enforcement doesn't want anybody knowing about and then we find out that um you've had discussions about discipline with the other side of the family and we they had agreed to no corporal punishment and you find out that cps was involved with your son and his stepfather because he hit him with a belt corporal punishment what you guys agreed would never happen and then you're finding out about this when your son is missing. These things, you know, singularly, they would probably mean nothing, right? Singularly, each and every one of these little crazy details, like Chris's top secret timeline and the scratches on his arm and all this other stuff, you know, singularly, they would literally mean nothing by themselves. But when you put all these things together in the way that they happened, I, I don't know if it's saying the same thing as it would say with them being individual events unrelated to each other. Let's keep listening. I'm the biological father. I have joint legal, joint physical custody. Somebody dropped the ball and didn't reach out and inform the, the father, which is me. And I don't understand why the state dropped the ball on that one. And how did you find out about CPS? Podcast. Everything's and, coming out I on mean, podcast. How does, that, does that concern you, especially with this case, that they might have done something to cause him to run away? I don't know what that really means, but I just know that I don't have all the information. He doesn't have all the information. He's basically saying that Katie and Chris have not provided him all the information. Why did they check the landfill in Kentucky? Was it the house trash said? Um, Jacqueline, you know, everybody has that question, honestly. Like, why? <clears throat> this is what I'm assuming happened, okay? Uh, this is an assumption on my part. This can't be taken as fact because I don't know if it's true. OK, if that makes sense. But this is what I'm assuming happened because of the information that I looked at. It sounds like there is and we all know that there's their community. This is the community the Proudfoots live in. There is a community adjacent to that their community that's being built. OK, and that particular trash, apparently they the county has some kind of contract where, you know, certain routes are taken to certain landfills. And so to balance the landfills, just like our water, sometimes you don't know that, but your water is actually supplied by a county or two over because you guys got short water and they've got to buy water from people that have more, more water. Okay. It's a county thing. Okay. Oh, look at what it is. Sepsis. It's nice to see you, my love. It's so nice to see you. I'll get to you in just a second. Um, <clears throat> but the whole landfill um, situation is, is, I do believe that they had some sort of hit on one of the trash receptacles in that community that is being built. And that particular community is shipped to Kentucky, not their community, this other community. And so that tells me that they must have found something with that dumpster hit that gave them the probable cause to get the search warrant because they went into the Kentucky landfill with a search warrant. It's a little bit more involved than going there and saying, hey, do you mind if we search your trash? OK, that means they had something. We don't know what that something was. <clears throat> but if if they're in the Kentucky landfill, it's telling me that whatever something they had 
came from that community over, not the Proudfoot's community, if that makes sense. <clears throat> now, again, that's hypothetical. Um, there may be something that we're, we don't know about. Again, this case is being held to law enforcement's chest, but that's my best guess. That's my best guess. But I'm absolutely unsure if that's accurate. I do believe the only truth to Katie's story is the bang when Sebastian was attacked uh, in his bed, in my opinion. He was taken to the vehicle in the garage. Why the mattress uh, or bed when you're in, when you're missing, your child is missing. Yeah. Why the new mattress and bed? But we don't know where the new mattress and bed it went. We don't know. Um, we don't know. I'd have to assume that Sebastian's original bed was still in the room. That would be awfully sus because uh, Chris Proudfoot says the new bed is in the garage. So, uh, yeah, but I'd like a little more information before that's, you know, but it does seem su suspicious, especially because it, it, it almost reminds us like the wells, you know, wh what happened to the, 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 the couch that was in front of that basement door that had been there for years that just disappeared all of a sudden after Summer Wells disappeared or the day she disappeared, that mattress was gone. Where did the mattress, or not the mattress, where did the couch go? I'm curious where the couch is. Is did, it, did he take it to a landfill? Did he dump it off the side of the road? Where's the couch? There was a, there's a couch missing from the Summer Wells house. Um, is there an official timeline and I know people, you know, there was, you know, we went to bed at this hour, but does TBI or anyone have an official timeline as to the series? I'm pretty of sure they do, but I'm not involved in the investigation, so I wouldn't have it. See, he's letting us know, like, law enforcement ain't communicating with them. Law enforcement's not communicating with the public. They're not communicating with social media. They're not communicating with mainstream media. And they're not communicating with the victim's parent or parents. Have the three of you been in contact every day like you were several weeks ago about this? I was in contact with both Katie and Chris today. But... See, he's holding a lot back. You see how he was about to say something and he grabs his, his mouth. You see that, that dip? He's holding a lot back that he wants to say. This man has a lot to say. I'm telling you, this man has a lot to say that he is holding back. I've heard he said his phone is open and available. Well, so is mine. This is a father that don't, I mean, he, he don't give it. I, I can tell you this man right here probably wants to rip that man, that other man's head off. I, I, I can tell you that I, this man doesn't like, look like somebody that I'd really want to, you know what? Just saying. You can leave a voicemail like seven or eight people have already left me voicemail today. I'm just, I'm going. Do you think it's odd, the lack of communication? I mean, think about it. Like for me, if 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 I had your kid, let's let's remove the familial situation out of it. Let me just ask you this. Um, aw, Miss Robin, thank you. God bless you. Five Bullhorn Betty memberships. If you received your Bullhorn Betty membership this morning, please don't forget to tell Miss Robin. Thank you. Thank you, love. Thank you for all your love and support. Aw, it's so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. But does anybody else think it is um, a little odd? Because for me, think about it. If, if we were babysitting a kid, it's not even our family, okay? Just, it's just a kid we're watching. And say on our, our watch, that child disappeared and we had nothing to do with it. You know, we were making lunch. Uh, like we normally do, and the child got out of the house, okay? I don't know how many people would go run away and not communicate with the person. You see what I'm saying? Like, I was the last one to see. So I would. you would think that Katie and, and Chris would be, like, informing uh, Seth, about every little detail. I mean, their son is missing. Their son went missing on their on their watch. I would be thinking that they would be ke keeping him informed of literally every single thing. And so then we're finding out that Katie and Chris have pretty much stopped all communication with Seth. 
literally all communication. And, and the only time that he can talk to him is in a situation like this where they're, they're having to meet with TBI. It shouldn't be like that. You, they've been working together. Like they, he told Dolly, there's no, there's no child support arrangement. They just, they make these arrangements amongst themselves. That tells me that they, they work together. That they don't need the the court system telling them how to how to handle their family arrangements. That means they're both good on both sides. We got good parents here. We got good parents that don't need a, a court to tell them to be good parents. So if they've been communicating all these years, these 15 years of this boy has been alive, why when he disappears, do the Proudfoots just cut off all communication with Seth? This stuff doesn't make sense. And then you couple the fact that Chris has scratches on his arms, has has CPS involved in 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 the household for spanking a kid when they had a family plan of no corporal punishment. So again, all of these little things that are leading up to this mean nothing by themselves. But they're not by themselves. They're with this, they're with this, they're with this, and they're with this, leading us to believe something more is going on here and something more happened inside that home. And while we may need to hold, you know, we have to hold out hope because we don't know what happened to Sebastian and we pray for his safe return. But it's hard to remove all of these glaring defects that are public in this case. It's hard. And my heart bleeds for this man because he wants answers that only those two people have, and they are refusing to tell him. Sad. You know, I get people calling me while I'm on the phone, and it's like, I can't just sit there and answer the phone for everybody. If I did that, I probably wouldn't be able to get out of my house. There's been a lot of criticism over this investigation. I'm sure you've received criticism as well as the Proudfoots. How does that make you feel in a time where you're just trying See how his arms start moving? Like I said, he starts getting a little more active with his arms. That's that's uncomfortable. He's holding a lot back, guys. I'm telling you, he's holding a lot back. I don't know what he's holding back. I'm not in his brain. I'm just telling you, I can tell this man is holding a mess back. That's what I can tell you. People are being, well, that those that goes back to those keyboard warriors I talked about on the first interview that you and I had. They're still at it. They'll never stop. They're keyboard cowardly. warriors. I, are people attacking Seth? Is that what I'm understanding, guys? If you are attacking Seth, Seth is, this man has, uh, you need to do better research. I don't know how a man that's at a, a, a at, that's working a night shift has time to go an hour out of his way in the middle of his shift and, and do something with his son. It doesn't make any blessed sense. This man is probably the furthest removed from this case uh, of anybody. So if anybody's calling this man and harassing him, you guys got a screw loose. An absolute screw loose. It's just, we denounce that kind of stuff. Leave these people alone, folks. Don't call them. They got missing kids. They don't care about your petty YouTube bullshit either. In this world. And then there's people who are go-getters. Yes, there are. My, beat, my feet, they're on the ground. They're never going to leave the ground. I'm going to find my son. His feet are on the ground. His feet are on the ground. I think that was a, a call to, to Katie and Chris Proudfoot. His feet are on the ground. They've been on the ground. He's working to try to find answers. Where is Chris and Katie? I have been asking this for a solid month. Where are they? Because outside of interviews, I see them doing squat to find their son. Squat. All they want to do is pony themselves up in front of uh, media to make them have the appearance that they're doing something when they're doing squat to help. Squat. Where is Katie and Chris? Hey, Katie and Chris, 
here, let me give you an idea. Let's not worry about work, right? We have a missing child, a missing child that's been missing for a month. I'm sorry. The last thing I'm worried about is finances. Take everything from me. Take it all. Give me my son back. That's what you should be saying. That's what all of you should be saying. Why don't you guys learn from Seth? Be a Seth. Be a Seth. Chris, Katie, be a Seth. My beat, my feet, they're on the ground. They're never going to leave the ground. I'm going to find myself. Oh, yes. Seth says, sorry about that. <laughs> thank you, guys. I just realized that Seth says, oh, thank you. Thank you. Seth says, just gifted five Bullhorn Betty memberships. If you received your Bullhorn Betty membership, please, please, please don't forget to tell them. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Robin. Thank you, Seth says. I love you guys. God bless you. Period. And plans, you know, today on moving forward, anything, any more resources being used on this investigation or anything you have to say about that? The United Cajun Navy is currently sitting down there right now at 90 Volunteer Drive in Hendersonville. 1030. That's when volunteers need to show up. 1030. Show up, have your ID, sign the paperwork, and they send people out in teams. When you show up, there ain't no. Um, and I want to say something for the record for everybody that's in here. Um, this whole driver's license thing. Um, I don't care, you know, what organization that you go with. Um, I find it, um, del uh, you know, derelict in their duty by not getting a driver's license. When you're out here and you're organizing a event, a search party like this, and you are expecting to have many people show up, you have to take pre precautions. And one of those precautions is making sure that everybody's accounted for. And if God forbid something happens, they need to be able to tell law enforcement. Okay. When you have 50 people out there, you can't, you can't tell them the person's name. You can't tell them. All you have is a sheet of paper with names on it. So if somebody doesn't come back, if somebody gets injured or God forbid somebody falls and something more serious happens, you need to be able to tell law enforcement immediately who it is so they can get a hold of the people. It is a security thing. It's not an information. We need your information thing. If it's an uncomfortable situation for you to turn your driver's license over, then don't go to those searches. Because I tell you, when I'm organizing, when we're just getting together and we only have, you know, a small group of people, I'm not worried about it. I usually know who everybody is. If something happens, I know them by name. I know how to contact their family. You know what I'm saying? When it's a small group, but that's not what that's not what's going on out there. They're asking for all volunteers to come in and they're sending them out in groups. You have to be able to make sure people are coming back and making sure nobody's injured. And God forbid, if something does happen, you need to be able to notify law enforcement who it is and, and get them the information. You can't do that if you don't have it. So anybody that's out there that is uh, complaining about this whole driver's license thing, don't. Because I'm telling you, when we organize stuff like this in a big, uh, big, like I said, not a small group like we usually do. You know, when I go out there searching with just Bolivia and stuff, we may have some of our personal friends or some help from our, our channel out there. That's, that's something totally different. But when you're organizing a search like this, it's a totally different atmosphere. It's it, you, you're required to do a little bit more. And you got to remember the people that like the United Cajun Navy, they're responsible for those people. They took responsibility when they came in there. That means that if something happens to them, they have financial responsibility. You see what I'm saying? So you got to take those things into consideration. So you've got to protect yourself. And if they're not doing these things and something, God forbid, happens, they could be even more liable for whatever happens. So you got to cover your ass. This is a cover your ass type of situation. And sorry, if you have a problem handing over your driver's license, don't be part of an organized search effort. Because let me tell you, every search effort um, at a magnitude of this, it is a requirement. It's not something from the, you guys know how I feel about the United Cajun Navy. They, they're not getting any um, good stuff from me. But they're doing a good cause right now. They're the only ones out there doing it. Um, they ran a lot of people off, but they're the only ones out there doing it and they need help. And it's not their help. I'm not asking you to go out there and help the United Cajun Navy. I'm asking my people to go out there and help Seth. 
and to go out there and help Sebastian. That's what I'm asking my audience to do. Because I know that we're adults over here and we can put our petty bullshit aside for the sake of a better cause. That's what I know. I know my people are like that. So if my people are like that and you're hearing this and you're in the Tennessee area, go out and help. Period. If you have the ability to help, help. That's our motto here, right? If you don't have the ability to help, support the people that do. Nobody there except for a couple people. That's because they've already sent teams out. They're just going to keep sending teams out until we find my son. Have there been um, a lot of volunteers coming out to help find Sebastian? Today there was, and I want to thank everybody who did come out. We're seeing an increase, and we're going to continue to see an increase. Good, good. And people need to be going out there. Again, if you have the ability, it's not about the United Cajun Navy, okay? I want to make that very clear. It's about this man right here and that boy that's on his shirt. And that's what each and every one of us need to remember. Because we're here for a cause. We're not here for drama. We're not here for petty squabbles. We're not here for pissing contests. We're here to do good. A lot of our channels are here to do good. A lot of our channels are here to advocate. Sometimes, I mean, right now, think about it. I'm down like four flat tires, but you don't see me stop advocating for this kid. You don't see me stop telling people to go out there and help. That's what he needs. He needs bodies. He needs help. I'd like the whole state of Tennessee to volunteer, and then we'll hit other states. And you're Sebastian's father. Tell me, what is Sebastian like? He's a unique child. All right. Every time this he man be, talks about is. his his son, he gets the biggest smile on his face. Do you guys notice that? Even when he doesn't know what to say, when he thinks of his son and he thinks of the amazing the amazing son he has, he gets this huge look at that smile. He gets this huge smile on his face thinking of his son. Every time he thinks of his son he or thinks of a memory of his son, it puts a smile on this man's face. His world is gone without his son. I, ho I hope everybody understands that. He loved his son. This was a good dad. You know, we don't we don't cover a lot of good dads on this program. You know, we do like we covered uh, Kaylee Gonzalez. We see some amaz amazing parents out there, but most of our cases are covered by the parents that aren't so good. This man loves his kid. This is a dad. This is a dad. This is not just a father. This is a dad. He's a unique child. All right. He can be, he can, I mean, there's, it's really hard to describe my son. I mean, besides being unique, whether he's up to no good or he's up to good, he's still. He's just got that uniqueness about him. It's, it's it's really hard to describe. I mean, he's my mini me. If he if he has a goal, he's gonna accomplish that goal. You know, people at school, they liked him. All the kids are wanting to know when he's gonna come back. They want to help and volunteer. Uh, Wanda, just to let you know, the next search is today at 1030 at that 90 volunteer drive or volunteer way or whatever it, he said. Uh, they're starting at um, 1030. You can get out there, enroll, sign up, whatever they require of you. And uh, apparently uh, you go out into a search, a search party or search group or something like that. So um, if anybody would like to volunteer, that's how to do it. Now, that's through the search group. Again, you're not required to go through the search group. It's good to go through the search group because then you're not going duplicating extra work. Uh, but again, if you want to be involved in the search group, you need to go to 90 Volunteer Way or Court or Drive or whatever it is. It's on the United Cajun Navy website. Um, but that's, that's you know, if you'd like to go. Teachers are wanting their putting out prayers every day you know everybody it's coming up it's easter i'm hoping for an easter miracle you know i could definitely use it in my life right now 
That's so and why did they search the landfill? I have no idea. They don't, he doesn't even know why they searched the landfill. So, they, I mean, if this doesn't tell you, law enforcement is not communicating with anybody in this family about the investigation. Not part of the investigation. They're not going to tell me stuff. I am emotionally attached, as any parent should be. So that's one of the things. He's emotionally attached. That's why they're not telling him, because they're worried that... And that is a problem. You know, when you have an emotionally attached, they, they, there's been times in the past before these rules and protocols where they've told people stuff and they've, you know, unintentionally told other people that have affected their case. So he is, he's right. And how often do you meet with TBI? If I, I call them all the time. I wonder if Chris and Katie do. Call, text, hey, any new news? They either let me know or they let me know. Are you are you happy with the work that all these agencies have done or do you think there needs to be? He's contentious here. He's holding a lot back here too, but I like how he answered this. Be more. There could probably always be more. We just got to figure out what more is necessary. Am I happy with them? I'm not unhappy. But you asked me that after after my son's back. And it's going to be, I'm happy. There you go. And I believe that, you know, but he, you know, just like any parent, I think um, Riley Strain's stepdad said it the best, you know, when you're dealing with this, you, it, it, nothing is ever enough, right? Uh, when it's your child, your family member, your loved one, nothing is ever enough. You know, moving heaven and earth isn't enough when it's your loved one. And I think that that is kind of what he's conveying here, much like the Strain family conveyed, honestly. All right. Because in, in law enforcement, it's always goal-oriented, you know? Go to, go to work, put a smile on your face, get the job done. I know that they're putting their effort, 150% effort into this. And I appreciate that. And I'm hoping it will pay off with rotation. Do you think Katie and Chris are suspects? I have no idea. There you go. He has no idea. Remember, at the beginning of this, he was telling everybody what they wanted to hear, what he needed to say. Um, and he said, basically, no, none of us are suspects. You know. And then uh, further in the interview, he says, well, it's an ongoing investigation. Nobody's cleared. And then now she's pointedly asked him, do you think they're involved? And he says, I don't know. I can tell you if somebody came to me and told me, do you think your mom did this? It would be a big fat no. It wouldn't be, I don't know. It would be, no, there ain't no possibility. That's not what we're getting from Seth, unfortunately. So again, this is why I really feel he's holding back a lot. He has a lot on his mind. He has a lot on his soul. He has a lot, just a lot. He's carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. He's trying to move heaven and earth, you know, and then he had to deal with all this drama that was created, you know, there and all he's wanting is help. Like my heart bleeds for this man. It truly, truly, truly bleeds for this man. Um, I literally want nothing but the best for him. So getting back to what we as a channel can do to help. Well, again, jammed up. So as soon as I know when I'm actually getting my vehicle back is going to decide when we go to Tennessee. Um, I think at this point, we just need to wait until I get the, the vehicle back. I, I don't know when it's happening. It could be three days. I could get it Monday. I could get it on Friday. They don't know. That's the problem. And it's, um, it's, it's a mechanic, you know, it's, it's not the mechanic's fault. It's not my fault. It's just uh, parts, things happen. It, it It's delayed. So that's where we're kind of at. Like I've got uh, Justin on TikTok, you know, he, he, while I was doing my live on TikTok, he comes in and, and, and you know, he, I need to be there. I get, I need to be there. I just, I, I'm down like four flat tires. I don't know what else to say. 
um, as soon as I get know what, what my destiny is, right? <laughs> Once I know, then we can plan. But I, I was supposed to get the car back Friday, Wednesday, you know, Thursday, I get a call that things ain't working out the way they need to be working out. And it's just, it is what it is. So again, I feel like if I was supposed to be there, God would make a way. God's not making a way. There's a reason why I'm here. I've got to, I've got to trust that. I've got to trust that. We all have to trust that no matter how we feel about the situation. I want to be there. There's no doubt in my mind that I want to be there. I've got a good idea of where I, I've been studying these maps, studying these maps, studying these maps. Like I've got, um, I've got places. I, I, I really, really, really um, want to search and they're not in this area. And, and it doesn't seem like anybody's getting out of this area. And it's, you know, it's, it's starting to wear on me a little bit. So uh, this is the interview Dolly had with Seth. And I didn't watch a whole, I didn't watch the beginning part of it because I, I didn't realize it was live. And, and as I was waking up, I was getting notification that it was uh, live. And so I was trying to watch it, but it kind of came in. But either way, I want, I want to um, go through this uh, interview um, to bring awareness to uh, the Sebastian Rogers case, et cetera. This is a 32 minute interview. I don't think we're going to go through all of it, to be honest with you. Um, but we will go through some of it. And I think I'm going to start kind of in, let me see, right there, maybe. Or makes them seem a little suspect. Okay. I ain't saying they, and, stuff is you know i you know when i hear you say today that they don't think they're a suspect some of their the behavior is strange like the whole going out of town thing i think that was a little strange look, look at his like, face you know because i would i'd be like you look at his face that man's not stupid okay i'm sorry set look look at what dolly's saying and and he literally turned that camera to side eye I want you guys to watch this. I'm not going to interrupt. I just want you guys to watch this. Listen to this. When he played on his Switch, he didn't play online with people. He played single player games. Okay. So I'm just I'm just wondering how somebody maybe have access to, you know, to get to your son. You know, if I heard you say today that the TBI don't think you're a suspect, they don't think Chris is a suspect, uh, they don't uh, think Katie's a suspect. So there has to be some if you guys, if they're not like the Look internet is saying, if Katie and Chris don't got nothing to do with this, then there's another answer to what's going on. Look at that. He's you just, know, or there'd be another answer. There'd be another, another answer. answer. Now, that man, do you, I, I want to take a poll in here. I, I just want ones and twos. And we're going to get inside um, Seth's mind. Okay. We're, we're not Seth's mind, but we're going to try. Based upon everything you've seen from Seth so far, not just here on this channel, just other interviews, I know you guys are all extremely plugged into this case, okay? So let me ask you, how many of you, by shows of ones and twos, don't plug in yet until I ask the question and tell you what one and two is, okay? Calm down. Lord have mercy, y'all. No, I'm just joking. How many of you guys believe Seth thinks there's something sus suspect that went on in that house the night his son disappeared. One that you believe Chris or Seth thinks something happened and the parents are involved. And two, Seth doesn't think the parents are involved. How many people believe that they think Seth, wow, that was quick. So you guys, you guys think uh, Seth is, 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 believes that there's something not right. Something stinks to high heaven. Okay. Cup I see a, I see a one one I see a two up there. So, thank you for being honest. So the majority. So I I guess um I guess I would venture to say the majority of my audience here on this show, we've got about 500 across our platforms about 573 between all three channels right now. So for the for for the small, you know, we have under about under 600 people in here right now. And the majority of those 600 people that are here um, believe that Seth thinks 
the Proudfoots had something to do with it. Now, granted, we're not Seth. We're we're getting inside Seth's head. Um, this is not what Seth really believes. You know, we don't know what the man believes. I was just curious what people think because to me, when I see him side eyeing and 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 you know making sure people see that, it it, it I, I don't think he intentionally did that. I think he's just like seriously. You know, I think it was nat it was natural for the conversation he was having because he doesn't have a camera sticking in his face. He's kind of. He's got his guard down because it's almost like talking to your friend because you're on the phone and you have a propensity to make those um, natural motions and reactions when your, your, your levels brought down a little bit, your comfort levels brought down. And Dolly has a way of doing that, you know, cause he's super chill and um, he has a way of just talking to people and, and humanizing. Like he's, he, I think what makes people, gravitate to Dolly is he's easily humanized. You know, they see him, they see him like a goof, you know, he's, he, he's, he's kind of good. He's, fun, you know, goofy, but not, not like goofy, like stupid goofy, like goofy in a fun way. Like he makes you laugh. He kind of breaks down your, your barriers. He brings you into a comfort or a comfortable level, you know? Um, and he's professional when he does this stuff. So, and then he's a father. So he has that connection with Seth about being, you know, a father. Um, so I just think he has a way of bringing stuff down and making people comfortable on his show. And that really is when you start getting all those natural reactions and, and natural expressions on people's face, in my opinion. Now, again, totally get, could be wrong. That's just my opinion. Now, do you think your, would your son know the area? Do you, would he be easily lost? Does he get confused? If you don't, if you stay all the time in your house and you're only going from your house to the bus stop, and then you know how to get to where you're going to school, and the rest of the time you're in a vehicle. So he's already basically telling us this kid does not go leave the sight of the parents. I mean, if we were to look at this, okay, let's just spitball here. Let's just spitball here. Um, let's say there were uh, there was a stranger danger type of situation. This would be the 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 most inopportune person to get, right? If somebody is is hunting for, they're going for the path of least resistance. Somebody easily persuaded, easily to take. I mean, you're talking about a massive operation for this 15-year-old boy. If it's anybody else, you're talking about coordinating how to get inside the home, coordinating how to get him out of the home, coordinating how to lock the door. Meanwhile, you know nobody in this family and you're just trying to get this boy. What were they going to do with the boy? Are we talking about an ST, an SA, HT, you know? What are we talking about here? Now, you're talking about a kid that's always around his parents and his family. Again, where's the opportunity? Where's the opportunity for a stranger danger? You're talking, and if there is one for this boy, you're talking about a massive operation to abduct this boy. A massive operation. And why would somebody be so focused on this boy if there's, a, a you know, many other kids that are out there that you can just snatch off the side of the road? Why are you going to be, you know, getting a huge effort involved to, 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 to be ninjas that break into homes and abduct a 15-year-old boy that's 5'5 five, five and 120 pounds? Seems like it's a lot of work. And most criminals that I know want the easiest payoff with the easiest and least amount of work. Just saying. This seems like a massive operation for an abduction, if that is truly what is being implied here. So I don't believe it. And again, it comes right back. Every single thing leads right back to that house. And leads right back to Chris and Katie. Everything. Now, I'm not saying they've had anything to do with it. I'm just saying that they're not explaining these phenomenons away. 
And then you couple that with their bizarre and strange behaviors. And it's it's leading many of us to say, we watch this all the time. You're not putting, you're not giving us smoke and mirrors because we're used to smoke and mirrors. We have we have fans here, right? We're getting that smoke moved right along. So again, coming back to how in the world did this happen? Why is Chris going back to work when they have a boy to look? Why are they not standing next to, next to like buddy to buddy, belly to belly with uh, Seth Rogers for a unified front on finding their son? Why does it appear that Chris and Katie keep running away and hiding from the public as if they are guilty and shameful of their behavior? Those are just the things that I have a problem with. You see what I'm saying? So again, guys, this is where we're at. I'm not going to play all of Dolly's um, interview because from my understanding, he just dropped it, I think, this morning. So I don't want to take away because obviously, you know, he worked hard for this. He got to meet uh, Seth. He got to speak to Seth. He got to understand Seth. This is his work. So if you guys would like to go over there and uh, preview his interview with Seth, please go over to Dolly Vision's channel and make sure you hit that like button. Um, he did a great job on this interview. Tomorrow we'll dissect this interview a little bit more once he has an opportunity um, uh, to, for people to view his work and people to understand what that interview was about. We'll discuss it tomorrow in a more in-depth coverage of it because I think there's a lot of great information that we can derive from this interview. So guys, go out there, hit that um, that like button for Dolly and go check out this interview. And tomorrow morning, we'll do a live. I'm here. I didn't mean to neglect you guys. Okay. I'm, I'm in a bah humbug mood. Okay. I've been sitting in this house for a month. I've been ordering my food. I haven't left. I'm getting stir crazy here. Okay. I'm having cabin fever. If you really want to know what, what is going on in my world, I'm getting cabin fever. Okay. And so I've been in a, like a bah humbug mood, uh, for the last week. <laughs> and then I realized I'm neglecting my peeps and my peeps make me feel good. So I got up this morning. Today is a new day. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to give back. It's a great day to be blessed. It's a great day to be humbled. And it's a great day not to take life for granted. It is good Friday. It is good Friday. So I want everybody to have an amazing weekend. I want to tell everybody happy Easter, but I'll tell you guys that again tomorrow. Uh, we will not be doing a live here on Sunday unless there's breaking news. Um, I want everybody to enjoy their family, enjoy the meaning of this Easter this year. And if you guys are so, so moved, you know, in honor of Easter, in honor of Sebastian, you know what I'm going to say. Do an act of kindness for a perfect stranger in their honor. It's one of the simplest ways that each of us can give back in part just a little bit um, in honor of somebody else that's less fortunate, um, that has been hurt or injured. It's just a way to honor them. And so I hope you guys all join me as uh, I wish I could do an act of kindness for a perfect stranger but the only act of kindness I can do is cook a meal and take it over to my neighbor because, you know, I, I, I'm immobile. <laughs> and, but I know my neighbor, so it's not for a perfect stranger. So that's the only way I can give back right now. So I'm relying on all my beautiful people uh, here and across social media to do an act of kindness for a perfect stranger this entire weekend in honor of Easter and, more importantly, in honor of our missing loved ones. And there's a lot of them right here on this thumbnail behind me. Uh, a lot of missing people that need to be brought home. And I hope that, you know, the work that we do finds answers to some of them. You know, it's, it's, it's what we can do. It's the way we can give back. It's how we can help. And so if that's what we can do, that's what we do. So guys, you guys have an amazing day. God bless each and every one of you. Have a happy Easter. And don't forget to rock it out with your coffee beans out. Don't forget to be fearless. If you see something, say something. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And don't forget to be fearless. God bless.